Hey everyone, James here again. I wanted to use this video to take a few moments to talk about how artists everywhere can get involved in activism right away. Now before we get to how you can engage your audience, the first thing you need to do is inform yourself. Not only do you need to figure out what matters to you and what topics you want to address through your music and using your platform, but you need to educate yourself about those topics. Because as you start to share your perspective on the world and your thoughts and feelings about things, you're going to come across people who feel differently and have differing opinions that they want to express with you. And you don't want to get into an argument with these people. It's not about fighting. It's about having meaningful discourse, about having you know, conversations that lead somewhere, that help people see things in a new light. And the only way to do that is by first educating yourself, reading books, listening to podcasts, watching documentaries, asking people who know more than you to share their knowledge with you. And after you do that, you can start engaging your audience. Now the first and probably most popular way of using your platform to shape the way the world should be is through songwriting, protest songs, songs about very specific topics that people start to think about and consider in new ways. There are songs about racism, alcoholism, poverty, domestic abuse, and a million other topics written by artists who care about those things deeply. And when you write a really good song that has a strong message, people that hear that song start to think about the things you're talking about in a way that no amount of advertising or flyers or discussion could ever get them to do because people hear and engage with music on a very deep soulful level so when a song really resonates with them they start to think about what the topic of that song is what that song's about and as they do that they start to ask their own questions and they start to see the world in a different way so if you're using your platform to share the things that matter to you with a message of hopefulness and optimism and encouragement and actionable things that people can do they're gonna take that to heart and they're gonna act on it. The second thing I have to share is probably the most obvious, which is open your purse, open your wallets, give money to the organizations that are supporting the causes that you believe in. Whether that's $1, $5, $10, every penny matters. So give what you can. And if you wanna give even more, that leads us to my third point, which is using your platform to generate funding for the organizations supporting the causes you believe in. In short, Raising money. A good way to do this is by releasing exclusive or limited edition merch. People buy the merch and you take the revenue from that and you give it to an organization. If you don't feel good about that, I know some people feel weird about using a cause to sell a merchandise item no matter what the message or branding is, then you can put on a live stream event or a concert. Now obviously, in the age of coronavirus, it's a little hard to host a concert, so digital events are a perfectly fine solution. Host a live stream event on Twitch or YouTube or any one of a number of services and allow fans to donate during your performance. The punk band The Dropkick Murphys recently did this with their Fenway Park presentation and raised money for three separate causes and in total had over $700,000 in donations. Now you can't perform at Fenway and I don't know if you'll be able to raise $700,000. I certainly hope you do. But even $100 from fans that are watching you perform acoustic in your living room would be a great help to so many organizations around the world. So find some organizations you believe in and do your part to help raise money by using the thing that you have, your talent, your gift, your songs, your music. Now the fourth step is a little bit more involved and it may be a little difficult for some of you at first, but you need to be encouraging your fans to get engaged. While it's nice if they like the protest song that you write or if they donate a few dollars to an organization that you believe in, you ultimately want them to get off their butts and get active in their own lives, not just online, but in the real world as well. So you need to be encouraging their behavior by providing them with things that they need to educate themselves. That means books, podcasts, documentaries, just sharing those things on Instagram that tell you how to understand white privilege in five slides or how you can, you know, convince people that pro-choice is the best stance, whatever it happens to be. Do your part to help educate people so that they have the knowledge they need to go out into the world and influence meaningful change. Give them places to find resources. Give them all the tools they need. Don't just encourage people to vote, but encourage them to educate themselves about the things that they are voting for, not just the president. While it's good to vote every four years for the president, so much more important is voting at all the other levels along the way. Who's representing them in their towns and cities? Who's representing their county? Who's representing them in the state? All of these things matter, and too few people ever take advantage of the information available because, in part, they don't know how to find it. So do your part. 
If there's something that you care about, encourage your fans to learn about it by providing them with the materials. Do as much as you possibly can to make them educating themselves as simple as possible and they will become active because as people learn about what's going on around them, especially in their own community, they are constantly moved to take action and that's ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to get people to take action. The fifth thing I want to suggest is that you give your platform to somebody who has more information than you do about the things you're passionate about. Now, since the murder of George Floyd, we've seen this a lot with high-level celebrities. A great example is Shawn Mendes. He has over 50 million Instagram followers, and since George Floyd died, he's been giving his platform over to people in the Black Lives Matter movement who have more understanding of the issues than he does and can educate his fans about what's happening in the world around us. This is a great tool because Sean, while very popular, isn't the best person to speak on these issues and he certainly doesn't know everything there is to know. But he can give his platform to people who do and they will then be able to access his 50 million followers. Now I don't know if you have that many followers, I kind of doubt it because not a lot of people do, but even if you have just 10 followers, it's possible that by giving the reins of your account over to somebody else temporarily, you can influence a lot of meaningful change. So don't be afraid to ask for help. And if you don't know anybody that's willing to hop on your account and share things, then by all means, find some pre-made stuff online. Find those little one-sheet guides to how to understand white privilege or how to influence positive change in your area, how to get involved in local elections, how to volunteer at a local food shelter, whatever it happens to be. People are making tons of content that you can easily share with your audience. So don't be afraid to give up the reins, stop promoting for a minute, and let somebody else speak because it's when we allow others to speak and we hear from other perspectives and other life experiences that we're able to come together, understand this thing called the human experience, and work to make it better for everyone. Now I'll be the first to admit that all of this is pretty high level stuff. We are not getting too deep in the pond, but I wanted to give you a very basic set of tools that everybody can use and I hope to go a little bit deeper in the weeks ahead. But if you already have all that information you just want to learn about the music industry, that's okay too because Music Biz exists for you. We create a ton of content all about understanding and navigating the music business. So if you haven't done so already, take a second and subscribe down below. And if you have done that, well then you have my sincerest thanks and I want to leave you with the same thing I say every week, which is that I want you to take care of yourself because you deserve it.